So let's look at a cylindrical capacitor. So this would be a cylindrical conductor where there is an inner concentric cylinder inside. So imagine you have a concentric cylinder inside. And let's let the inside radius be A, and we can let the outside radius be equal to B. So let's look at the end view, where the inside radius, the red one, is A, and the outside radius is B. Let's say we have a net positive charge on the inside cylinder and a net negative charge on the outside of the cylinder. The electric field in the cavity between the inside and the outside would point from positive to negative. And the electric field always points from high electric potential to low electric potential. So the cylinder on the inside is at a higher electric potential. So let's calculate the capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor. And it would be the ratio of the net charge on one of the electrodes over the electric potential difference, delta V. So first we need to determine delta V. So if delta V is equal to negative integral of the electric field dotted with dr, a vector that is pointing in the same direction as the electric field, in this case, then we would need to determine the electric field. To determine the electric field, I can use Gauss's law. So in Gauss's law, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface over epsilon naught is equal to the closed surface integral of the electric field dotted with the area vector. So the charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface, if we make our Gaussian surface so that it is symmetrical about the center cylinder with a radius of r, so the radius r and a symmetrical cylinder, then we can determine that our charge enclosed must be the total charge on the inside cylinder over epsilon naught. The electric field would be piercing through the area perpendicularly to the area, and so the vector of the electric field and the area vector are parallel, so our dot product is the magnitude of the, of the electric field times the integral of the area. And in this case, we want to find the, uh, the dA represents the surface area of our cylindrical shell. So our electric field times 2 pi r h and then Q over epsilon naught. So then our electric field strength is Q over 2 pi epsilon naught R H. Now we have an electric field value to substitute back in to our potential difference equation. So then we have Q over 2 pi epsilon naught r h dr. The electric field and the position change are parallel to each other, and the dot product of two parallel vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of those vectors. So then I'll evaluate this from b to a. So we're going to go from the low potential to the high potential. So our electric potential difference would be equal to negative, I'm going to pull out the charge because it's constant, 2 pi epsilon naught h are all constants. And then I'll integrate 
from B to A, 1 over R dr. And when I do that, I'll have a potential difference that's equal to negative Q over 2 pi epsilon naught H times the ln of R evaluated from B to A. So this would give us negative Q over 2 pi epsilon naught H times the ln of A minus the ln of B. That means that we will have a negative Q over 2 pi epsilon naught H times the ln of A over B. So now that we have an expression for our potential difference, we can substitute that magnitude back into our equation for capacitance. So our capacitance is the charge divided by the absolute value of the potential difference. So making the substitution, you'd have Q divided by the absolute value of negative Q over 2 pi epsilon naught H times the ln of A over B. So then that would give us 2 pi epsilon naught H over the ln of A over B.